talk um, about some materials, synthetic materials that I think are very important and very relevant for collectors or for people that work with jewelry. I will talk not exactly about plastics, but very early plastics that uh, can be even difficult to find today. The first material I want to talk is a very special um, synthetic uh, man-made uh, material created in North Africa. Usually people say that, like it is created by the Tuaregs, but it's not exactly the Tuaregs who did, who do or did them. It is called phenolic amber and even if the name includes the word amber, it's not amber, it's not natural amber. Phenolic amber is this material, as you can see it has very very nice colors, very nice tones and also a very, very beautiful um, texture. Phenolic amber is something created or in use mostly at the middle to the end, to the end of the 19th century in the late Victorian period. And uh, even you can find good pieces from 1950s even. Later, was more hard, much, much more difficult to be produced probably because the material, the base that was used is kind of uh, toxic and the way to create the, the phenolic amber is very uh, invasive to the human body, very dangerous and the North African people that produce it, they didn't knew it was a dangerous material and they produce it practically without any kind of protection. Today you can find in the market some phenolic amber and uh, it is a rare material. If you can find pieces from the 19th century like this one, you will really have in your hands a treasure because not only because it's beautiful it's, or rare, it is because it's really a very very particular material with very particular characteristics and it's like a must for a collector of ethnic jewelry. There are another material from North Africa that can look like phenolic amber sometimes, it can be confusing if you don't know to determine which one is the other and it's called the copal amber that is mostly for Ethiopia or Sudan. This other material have shared similar techniques for producing but I think that personally the results are not the same. They, even if you can be confused if this is copper amber or if this is phenolic amber, um, after a while you notice that the copper amber look more like a real plastic with beautiful colors, excellent, fantastic look. And phenolic amber have something that can make you think it is uh, more like a stone and even the density of the material produce a very very heavy, usually very heavy um, product bead and also when you touch then you, you really feel that it's kind of a stone, more than a plastic. You feel like this is very solid, very dense and that density of the material with the time produce this line, the cracks lines that you see there and actually they are not a problem they are good that means that the material is old and uh, it is one step for being sure that it is authentic you will find some big 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 beds, big balls of phenolic amber that have kind of uh, repaired using metallic grabs metallic staples between the cracks and you have suddenly sudden like a ball of phenolic amber with this metal silver metal lines like if it is uh, Frankenstein and uh, it is quite interesting when you see them if you find true phenolic amber repaired with these uh, staples of metal don't be worried that does not mean that it's bad usually that means that it's very good and you can relax and say, okay, if the, if the surface is okay, it's complete, if you don't have chips, you don't have 
any other of this kind of loose of material, it is okay. I also want to tell you that phenolic amber, in some places, in some countries, they can tell you that for working with it, you need to have protections. Like uh, you need to cover your mouth and your nose, you need to use gloves. I don't, I don't want to discredit this kind of uh, security rules, but I think that overall is a material that is not so different to other plastics and uh, if it is very old like these ones with 120 130 years old I don't think there is a problem for wearing it for using it for having it in your house so if, if you find something like this and you can be sure it is phenolic amber especially phenolic amber from the 19th century I would recommend you to buy how much can cost something like this? How much? Well, if this collection of uh, beads from Phenolic Amber from North Africa is completely without, you know, chips or you can have the cracks, but it's normal. If they are like this one, you can expect more than $1,000 for something like this. But you need to be sure it is real. You need to be sure this is real phenolic amber, really old, and that it's in good condition. Something like this, you can find it for $1,000. If someone is selling it for $100, $200, I will recommend you to buy because it's a good investment. Not only, not only as a jewelry collector, like in general, someone that want to do an investment for a long time, I recommend to buy something like this because this will never lose value. It will increase value because it's quite difficult to find the real ones. So this is the first material I want to talk about today that was phenolic amber. That is not amber, but you can use the word amber for describing it. And you can uh, be sure that if you own one of these phenolic amber pieces, you have something of very nice and good quality in your hands that can increase value with time. If you have any questions, just let me know. You can write me a comment or write me a message and I can ask with you whatever you want if I know the answer, of course. Thank you so much. I hope you like it.